We got ourselves a climb to Diamond 1, a successful climb to Diamond 1 with Zombie World 60 card deck. The grass looks zombies. So let's let's go over the basics. What's the what's the best card in this deck this time? Uh, it, it's that grass looks greener. It's a great card, okay? Just mill seven bajillion cards as long as your opponent isn't also playing a 60 card deck and you're likely gonna win the duel. I mean, there's a chance you might not actually win the duel, so keep that in mind. So the point of the deck is still the same basic setup. You still want to get your ball and rock on the field, your boss monster alongside the zombie world on the field as like your field spell that allows you to enable the most plays that you can with the ball and rock because ball and rock allows you to negate the effects of a zombie monster from anywhere or banish a monster from the field or graveyard as a non-targeting removal in response to any zombie monster's effect. Both can be done the same turn, just as the hard ones per turn for each. So with zombie world turning all monsters on both players' fields and graveyard into zombies, that just means you have much more likelihood of being able to actually bully your opponent with Baldur Drock without having to actually worry about whether you're playing the one Eldritch player in ladder right now. <laughs> so there's that. And we do the general combo line still that we have Uni Zombie and we have Solitaire so that we could set up our mills alongside Gazuki, alongside Foolish Burial so that we could get cards like Necro World Banshee in the graveyard that allow us to then go ahead and play the zombie world from the deck as well as extender cards such as Reasoning, Ready Fusion, and Instant Fusion so we can get two bodies on board, including a tuner, usually that tuner being Uni Zombie. So we could then go ahead and link summon into our Halki Fibrax, which then allows us to special summon from the deck, the Glow Bloom, allowing us to then link it off into Link Karibo, allowing us to then special summon from the deck, the Doom King Baller Drock, when Zombie World is in the field, which usually you get on the field through Milling Dead, Necro World Banshee, and the Banshee from your graveyard. As a quick effect, by the way. So that's our standard combo. Like, that's what we've been doing since 1987 when Yu-Gi-Oh! was first released. So the big draw of this deck, it, you know, it's a 60 card deck, so you have to worry more about whether it's consistent or not. So I've been kind of fine-tuning the deck, needing to deal with the fact that we're in a sword soul meta right now where everybody is never going to be punished, and also everybody is going to be able to play millions and jillions of hand traps. We have to both find a way of being able to have enough consistency for our turn one combo line to go through in a 60 card variant, while also being able to have cards like Crossbound Designator and Called by the Grave to be able to stop your opponent from interrupting you and letting you go through with your combo lines. While also being able to have going second cards such as Infinite Perm, Nibiru, Maxi, Ash Blossom, Forbidden Droplet to be able to do whatever you can when your opponent happens to go first, which, you know, uh, knowing your luck will probably be a lot. With that being said, the Eldritch Engine, of course, a lot of people are already familiar with it. It's a very powerful engine when combined with the Vanity's Emptiness and the the everything else that you hate me listing right now. So let's not talk about those cards and not play them at all. Let's play fun, Eldritch. And what Eldritch lets us to do is it's another card that both allows us to go second, so very powerful, uh, allowing us to be another form of spot removal to bait out effects from the opponent, whether they have a negate with Baron de Fleur, etc. Also being another body that we can summon from the graveyard so we could go into link plays. Sometimes in certain situations, I'll use Uni Zombie to mill a Golden Lord if I already have access to Zombie World in another way, whether by just activating Zombie World or discarding a Necro World Banshee from the hand would you need Zombie's effect. So either way, that allows me to then send Hakido to the graveyard, for example, so we could then special summon back the Golden Lord, and then we got a Halki Firebrax, set in the end phase the Star of the Sanguine, and then we get to get another Eldritch from the deck and get an even bigger board presence while still having our general Halki Firebrax into Bowler Drock, into Formless Synchron on the opponent's turn, into Better De Fleur setup. So it's really powerful, not only just having that extra power that you could have on your opponent being a non-destructible monster with 3500 attack with something from the grave by its own effect as well as being able to remove cards from your opponent's field but also in this fact that it allows you to generate more card advantage than a lot of typical zombie world play lines can by virtue of being able to use the elixir's effects and the golden land traps effects to be able to go ahead and set more afterwards for the next turn follow-ups i was initially playing more spells and traps from the golden land archetypes i was playing three hikido i was even playing the counter trap and i was playing both the spell that special summons from the deck as well as the quick play that special summons from the hand or graveyard and I felt those were really nice for having more likelihood to mill those off of reasoning and grass as well as having more follow-up sets from banishes so that I don't burn out too quickly but I felt like when you're not gaming with reasoning and that grass looks greener I felt like it was just better to focus more on cards that were just playable from the get 
except Ghost Mitsuki. We usually play it at two, but in this profile, we're playing it at three because you could just keep milling them and then keep on using their effect to special summon more zombies from your graveyard. It's not once per turn. All you need is just more copies. So basically, with Zombie World, even your non zombie monsters could be summoned off of Mitsuki. As much as we are adept at being able to get two monsters on board for Link Summons, or let's say we are able to get Uni Zombie and Another Body on board, but they ash our Uni Zombie and Necro World Bed, she can't get into the graveyard. We lack Zombie World now. Going into Hockey Fibrax into Glow Bloom does nothing because without Zombie World in the field, the card that we want to special summon from the deck gets added to the hand instead, which is a level five or higher zombie monster. So adding Doom King Baller Drop to the hand is going to do nothing for us. Adding Eldritch to the hand could do something for us, but if it's turn one, that's a little too slow for us to really get any value for it. So really, we need to have a backup plan for those types of situations, especially since a lot of people are playing Infinite Impermanence, a lot of people are playing Effect Veil, or a lot of people are playing Ash Blossom. We need to have a backup plan for when your Uni Zombie mill doesn't go through, but you can still get a second body on board, and that's where we go into Verte Anaconda, which allows us to then go to the Destiny Hero, Phoenix Enforcer, and actually pretend to be a meta deck. That's pretty much why we do lean on the Verte Anaconda engine. It's small enough, especially in the 60 card build, and we have enough extra deck space to be able to capitalize on it, that it feels like it's essential to really maintain impact and be able to like keep up with a lot of meta decks when there's so much hand trap and disruption going on in general. That being said, we do typically want to go ahead and prioritize the Hulk into Glow Bloom play over the Verte play. See, the one thing that contradicts is the fact that Glow Bloom, when used to special summon a baller drop from the deck, for example, it locks you into zombie monsters. Whereas when you use Verte at a Conda, you can't special summon any more monsters after summoning your DP. So usually you want to prioritize getting your baller drop out just because that's, you know, that's the whole point of the deck. And also that's what makes Zombie World so impactful because with DP, you do get the non-targeting pop, but with baller drop, you get the non-targeting banish as well as the negate and baller drop being able to come back every standby phase if it's set to the graveyard as long as you have a field spell up it just makes it that much more powerful but there are certain situations where you could benefit from both let's say if you get zombie world in the field somehow and then you are able to mill baller drop but let's say you just use uni zombie to mill doom king baller drop and reasoning into another monster for example then you just use those two monsters to vertate into destiny hero phoenix destroyer that's the way to play around nibiru since that's only four summons while having a baller drop summon next turn as long as it doesn't get called by the grave which hopium you have your cross out designated to stop that then you basically have two very powerful disruptions not targeting pop not targeting banish and negate and then both monsters will come back in each standby phase and that's just so much pressure for your opponent to deal with being able to have multiple boss monsters is really nice that's also why it's really nice to have the Hulk set up as well when we can because if you have just doom king baller drop that gets hit with an infinite permanence it can be kind of painful but if you go into Hulky fibrax especially something from the extra deck the formula synchron not only do you draw a card if you don't miss timing which is you know we love that card advantage it also allows you to go into a level 10 synchro with the doom king ball drop so you can make that baron de fleur but at least now you have another level of interruption in case they were able to deal with your baller drop or in case you already activated both the baller drops effects there's a few interactions to keep in mind when you're using the scarlet sanguine which is when you use it on the turn that you use it you're unable to summon any monsters other than zombie monsters let's say for whatever reason they pressure you out into activating your scarlet sanguine you could chain how fibrax to special summon form of the synchron you will miss the timing since it's not chain link too but we do still have a target zombie monster to synchro summon using the baller drop as long as we have zombie world still on the field since we do require a zombie tuner and a zombie non-tuner form of synchron will be considered a zombie so in those situations where you still want to get a summon off of the elixir of sanguine you could still go ahead and use form of synchron to synchro summon with the baller drop into shirnui san saga and that will result in a non-targeting pop one on your opponent's turn that also allows you to then return the formula synchron to the extra deck and the reason it does so is because it's countered a zombie monster in the graveyard as well under the zombie world gazuki is here because it's another miller for us to play and also gazuki and mitsuki combo off really well with uni zombie because they're basically another way for you to guarantee your full combo having the uni zombie and either the gazuki or mitsuki in hand is full combo because you discard one and mill the other allowing you to then use mitsuki's effect to special summon gazuki and gazuki will mill the micro banshee you'll make both the Gazuki and the Uni Zombie into Hockey Firebrex, Glow Bloom Summon, Banshee into Zombie World, and Link Karibo into Baller Drop. And you feel like a winner. It's wonderful. So I also play Link Spider into Extra Deck with the Hakiro and the Conquistador. Both, even though they're counted as traps, they're also considered normal monsters. So you can link 
them off into Link Spider as well, so you could use them to make Verte Anaconda. Or if you have to, you could use them to make Axis Code Talker as well. IP Mascarena is here as those situations where we do want to go ahead and summon Baller Drock from the deck, and we also want to summon Hockey Firebrax. So, like, let's say if we have Hockey Firebrax. Glow Bloom and another monster. We could just link up Glow Bloom and the other monster into IP Mascarena, and then you have Doom King Baller Drug, and then on your opponent's next turn, you can go ahead and go Nightmare Unicorn to have another form of disruption onto your opponent, which is really nice. The good thing about it is, since we have Halky Firebrax, even if we dump their whole hand to do this play, we Halky Firebrax into Formula Synchron to draw a card, and suddenly we have a discard target for IP into Nightmare Unicorn, and that gives us just like that much more disruption on top of a potential Baron Defleur with the Doom King Ball. Drug. We also play Millennium Miser Strict as a target for Instant Fusion. Very likely you're not going to be summoning it ever, but if you do see Instant Fusion turn one and you don't need a tuner summoned off of Instant Fusion, then you could summon Millennium Miser Strict as a way to kind of bait out any kind of Ash Blossoms or any other type of hand traps that you could negate so that you could play and do your typical Uni Zombie plays or your Grass Looks Greener plays because both are incredibly, incredibly hurt by Ash Blossom. Ash Blossom will stop Grass Looks Greener in his tracks. That's why whenever you do see Grass Looks Greener, you do want to make sure that if you possibly can, activate any other card that can be an Ash target, both to see if there's any kind of delay that would hint at an Ash Blossom, and also just to see if you could bait it out. If I had Fusion Destiny and Grass in hand, I am using Fusion Destiny first. If I have Uni Zombie and Grass in hand, I'm using Uni Zombie first. If I have Curse Elfland and Grass in hand, I'm using Curse Elbin first. <laughs> if I have Pot of Prosperity and Grass of Head, I'm Pot of Prosperity for six, so they know I'm serious business and Ash at first, because we really need to make sure that Grass resolves, because the amount of advantage it provides us, it goes from being plus one, two, to plus infinity and beyond, because that's just how many resources we have to play with. Now, one thing to keep in mind is we only have three zombie worlds and no way to recur from the graveyard. It's not likely, but there are some times where you do run into the risk of being able to mill all three zombie worlds. So if you can help it, if you have, let's say, like a Necroworld Banshee, then you could mill off like a Foolish Burial, or if you have a Uni Zombie, or if you even want to just normal summon Banshee and banish it in response to Grass Looks Greener, just basically so that you activate Zombie World just before Grass Resolve, so you guarantee at least one Zombie World in your setup. That way, your main strategy could still function. Other than that, Solitaire is essentially more copies of Uni Zombie. It could also be more copies of Glow Bloom, because it contributes itself to summon either from the deck. It's a big Ash Banshee so just be careful with it. Try not to use it unless you're using it to bait out the grass looks greener. So like if I have a hand of Solitaire and Uni Zombie, I'm going for Uni Zombie because even if they ash it, at least they still have a body on board. Your hand could be complete garbage, but you resolve grass looks greener and suddenly all the cards you want in your hand are in your graveyard. You use Mitsuki to summon them off. So you see your Uni Zombie, you use Mitsuki to summon it off. Big benefit of Elixir of Scarlet Sanguine, if you already have your full setup along with a Golden Lord on the field, is that it could let you summon any zombie monster. It only requires you to summon Golden Golden Lord if you don't already control Golden Lord. So let's say if you have Golden Lord and Zombie World on the field but don't have Doom King Baller Drock yet, now you can summon Baller Drock from the deck. Or let's say you have Doom King Baller Drock and Golden Lord, you don't have Zombie World yet or your opponent's threatening your Zombie World, you go ahead, use Elixir of Sanguine's effect to special summon Necroworld World Banshee from the deck. It protects Zombie World from destruction and from targeting and also it can be banished from the field as well as the graveyard to activate another Zombie World. So that lets you then play another Zombie World if you need to as well as be a quick effect zombie monster that you could activate at any point so you could then trigger baller drops effect to banish a card that your opponent would control either on the field or in the graveyard other than that we play head trap galore Maxi, because hey, if we're going second, let's draw a billion cards. Ash Blossom, because hey, it's still the best card in the game. Nibiru, because wow, this meta is disgusting. And also, we play Infinite Permanence because everyone's playing Infinite Permanence, so it's really nice as a cross out target, while also just being a really powerful card to be able to use both going first and second. Any kind of negates that we do, either on the opponent's turn or on our second turn, to stop like a Baron Defleur from being able to negate our grass, is just always valuable. Also, play Forbidden Droplet as well. And usually, I was playing three, just as another way to go second but i cut it down to two to fit in more special summons with the fusions but i think like 
it's the same thing I talked about with my previous Zombie World video, which is that, like, as much as you want to be able to get cards in the graveyard, sometimes you're in situations where you don't have the right cards in hand or field to get to the graveyard, so it could be a little awkward. In this version, though, it's a lot more forgiven because this deck focuses more on dumping more into the graveyard, so setting cards like the Golden Lens Spells and Traps, for example, is pretty much free advantage, and you still are benefiting off of sending your three Mitsukis, or even your Gazuki, or your Knuckle World Banshee, so you still have a lot of good targets, so it's still like a really powerful going second card. Since we're playing a 60 card deck, I think two Glow Bloom is definitely essential because you're going to find yourself being able to sum it off of its effect multiple times per duel. So like the first Glow Bloom gets you to your first Baller Drog, but then you could summon another Baller Drog from the second one. Or if you're in desperate need of an Eldritch, you could go ahead and summon it off of the Glow Bloom as well. So those are the two targets. So it gives you four monsters to be able to summon from the deck with Glow Bloom. Linkaribo's core, Hockey Fibrex's core, and Formosa Synchron and Baron de Fleur are essentially core. DP Adverte is core in the sense that it's necessary to keep up with the meta. I never really go into Vampire Sucker. It just feels like really greedy. The general combo line for Zombie World that everyone talks about is after you go into Hulk, into Link Karibo to summon Baller Drock, you link off the Link Karibo and Baller Drock into Vampire Sucker, and then next turn you summon back that Baller Drock for a draw. So it's free advantage, it makes sense, but Call by the Grave is always a threat it just it's too risky to get that baller drop in the graveyard it feels too greedy i only do that play if i have cross out designator in hand or if i know that my opponent's already low on resources and i know i could afford to get that extra bit of card advantage the veteran savior especially in this build can make so many games so much more relevant even though it's a battle phase oriented effect because it essentially allows you to mill during damage calculation when it battles an opponent's monster so you do have to have a monster to attack into with this you can mill any zombie monster for cost so you could reduce that opponent's monster by the level of your milled monster times 200 essentially even if i don't destroy the monster even if savior crashes and dies against that monster if i could get a glow bloom in the graveyard while zombie world is up using avenger savior's mill that's huge because that special summons the doom king baller drop and since it's during like damage calculation being able to use glow bloom's effect there allows you to dodge an opponent's ash blossom for example so i think it's essential it also lets you know more mitsukis when you want to then go ahead and main phase two start summoning monsters back and extending more. Nice thing to keep in mind is since after you synchro off into Baron de Fleur using Formula Synchron and Doom King Baller Drock, since Baller Drock comes back, if you have to use the negate, you can also then use Baron de Fleur's effect on your standby phase to special summon back the Formula Synchron while returning Baron de Fleur back to the deck. So that you could then use both the newly summoned Baller Drock and the newly summoned Formula Synchron to re-summon Baron de Fleur and then reset its negate. Very nice and very nice. <laughs> <laughs> and another way you could reset Baron de Fleur's Negate is just linking it off, getting it off the field. You use your pop first, you pop one of your opponent's cards, link off the Baron de Fleur, and then you have Mitsuki in the graveyard. Mitsuki, special summons, Baron de Fleur under Zombie World. You could pop again on, on the same turn. You're insane. Seriously, keep winning. When it comes to Pot of Prosperity, for Pot of Prosperity, I'm always going to pot for six because we want to see grass. Also, we just kind of try to see what delays we feel from the opponent when it's our first turn. What do we feel like? There's a maxi they have in hand. We want to grab a Call by the Grave or Cross out Designated. I would probably opt to like Banish, Millennium Eyes Restrict, Sea Monster of Theseus, Link Spider, Vampire Sucker, IP Masquerada, and Shirnui Sun Saga as my six targets, unless I feel like Ready Fusion would actually like swing the course of my turn. In which case, I'll probably replace the Sea Monster of Theseus with like nightmare unicorn for example because even though not getting a 5300 access code talker does suck most of the time like the advantage you gain it doesn't necessarily need an access code talker otk and still being able to make it with 4300 attack and all of its nonsense pops is still an option on the table so that's usually how i think about it unless you know you have fusion destiny in hand then you go ahead and you banish your verte as well or if you got your fusion destiny piece in the graveyard then you banish verte and dp and that makes your decision easy nightmare unicorn and access code talker just great game enders because especially with all the special summons this deck can do especially under grass but even without it allows you to go ahead climb into nightmare unicorn and then let's say if you have nightmare unicorn zombie world and a glow bloom on the field that you summoned off of like Halky Fibrax because once again Halky Fibrax is broken you go Halky Fibrax the glow bloom and then another monster links off with the Halky Fibrax to special summon the nightmare unicorn and then glow bloom link summons off with the nightmare unicorn into access code talker and then summon the baller drop with zombie world live that's 2800 plus 5300 that's 8100 
100 to the face. You got access code token for a non-target pop, and you could chain Baller Drop for non-target banish. That's pretty powerful, just gonna say that. So it's always a really nice option I have, but it's not always an essential game ender. A lot of times you just win the game just by out grinding your opponent by like disrupting them, negating them, banishing them, and then just swinging, swinging, swinging with something like a Baron, Baller Drop, and the Golden Boy. So a couple of replacements that you could consider is you could take out some Saga. If you don't have it, I wouldn't craft it. You could take out Link Spider, Millennium Eyes Restrict as well. I don't think that's essential. It's just another tech I added. And you could take out the IP Masquerina, or you could add an Opelousa to keep alongside the IP Masquerina. Though I found myself almost never making the Opelousa in any situation that I could. I felt like it wasn't really addressing the problems that I was having. I already have enough to deal with monster effects in general. I felt more concerned about, let's say, back row, for example or any kind of floodgate so that's usually why like I still kept it for being able to spend like an important back or field spell or face of card with nightmare unicorn for example so that's kind of the mantra with that but out of all this nightmare unicorn and access code talker aren't core but they help lead to so many OTK lines that I think you should be playing them and you should just have them come on uh, other cards you can play you can play chaos ruler the chaotic magical dragon or however pronounced mill five it's pretty cool could be useful and even milling your eldritch cards could be nice you can play Cyframe Lord Omega as like a level 8 sickle target, and then you could play even Shooting Riser Dragon as well, so that you could mill a zombie monster that you want. You can activate that zombie monster's effect on the same turn, but it gives you follow-up. And then let's say if you mill like a Mitsuki, for example, with Shooting Riser Dragon, now you're level 3 Shooting Riser Dragon. You could use like a level 5 Hakira to go into a level 8 Synchro, whether like a Boral Savage Dragon with like maybe a Link Karibo attached onto it if you manage to get Link Karibo to the graveyard, or going to Gamma. Or go to whatever man i don't know you do you you can play nightmare phoenix there's so many options to play it's really just about what you want to tech so that's the deck profile you got the diamond one it's excellent and we happy boys tiny magic hedgehog destroyed